Hello again LinkedIn, it's David Kearns again with another With a Sharpie video. So here we are with our Sharpie. Um, last time I spoke to you in an introductory sense about carbon capture and storage and really set the scene as to, I guess, what the problem is. What is it that we're trying to accomplish um, with CCS? Um, in this video I want to go through a bit more detail about some different approaches that you can take to carbon capture. Um, so uh, for those of you who didn't see the last video, carbon capture is essentially um, taking a situation where you've got a lot of CO2 in a gas stream after you've combusted a fuel. Um, we have the problem that the uh, CO2 is quite dilute. So if we were to take a situation where we've taken a fuel and maybe we've put it in a boiler or a furnace or something like that, um, some form of combustion. Um, and into that we've taken a fuel which contains some carbon and we've taken some air and what we get out of that ultimately um, is we get some heat of course uh, which we could do something useful with but for the purposes of this video uh, ultimately what we're getting out of here is a CO2 plus others stream so typically the other gas components in here would be nitrogen from the air so the air coming in contains uh, nitrogen as well as oxygen we want oxygen for combustion, there's nitrogen there. So that's our problem. So uh, our problem ultimately is that this CO2 is dilute. And because later on we would like to take this CO2 that, we've, uh, that we get out of this system and uh, store it somewhere, we want to purify this to about 90% is, is a rough rule of thumb. So what I wanted to talk to you today about is a few approaches. How do we actually um, how do we go about this? The first one uh, sounds pretty obvious actually, and this is something known as uh, post-combustion capture. So what's post-combustion capture? Well, its name kind of gives it away. So I've got some kind of combustion process. Uh, so it could be a power station. Um, usual story, we had some fuel and some air going in, just as we had above. Um, out of this I get my, my flue gas and what I do is I run a gas separation plant and what it does is it is a predominantly a nitrogen and CO2 separator. So the idea is that we can try and concentrate up our CO2 stream so that we can make a CO2 which is you know, purified, so certainly more pure than it was in there. And we have the rest of our flue gas, which is mostly nitrogen with a little bit of trace oxygen and other things and, and water and so on. That's post-combustion capture. So it seems pretty simple, right? We basically take our, our flue gas and we put it through a separator. Um, that separator, by the way, requires an input of energy. So uh, often in the form of heat, but it could be in the form of electricity, depending on what technology you use. Um, I'll get into that in the next video. But this is post-combustion capture. It's the most obvious thing. We take the plant that we had originally, just to the left of my hands there, and then we can effectively bolt on uh, a purification plant. Um, it's got some upsides, is that it's uh, good for retrofitting. Okay, so you've got an existing power station or an existing plant that produces CO2 in its flue gas. You can retrofit existing plants with that. Okay, um, it does require a lot of energy. Uh, the reason it requires a lot of energy is that this flue gas is predominantly nitrogen and you're having to process a very, very large amount of flue gas, most of which is not the CO2 you're actually interested in. And so you might have to heat it or you might have to compress it. A compressor depends on what the technology is. Um, so it's a very energy intensive approach. And thirdly, it's uh, quite capital intensive. Uh, what does that mean? It means you have to spend a lot of money to buy the equipment, essentially. So it's, uh, it's got some advantages of being able to retrofit existing power stations and existing plants but it does have these, these downsides. And people have been doing a lot of research over the years to try and bring that energy consumption number down and the capital intensive nature of it down. Um, they've made progress over the years, um, but it remains a challenge. Um, the second approach is as this post-combustion capture 
title would suggest, is something else known as pre-combustion capture. So what's pre-combustion capture? Uh, pre-combustion capture is basically saying, instead of allowing our carbon in our fuel and all of this nitrogen in the air to get together, what we will do is we'll actually take the carbon out of the fuel before we combust it. So here we are instead is we can do this in a number of ways. Um, if you're using natural gas, you can use uh, what's known as gas reforming or, or uh, steam reforming. Um, but essentially it's uh, a separation, usually a chemical separation. And what it does is it takes your fuel, which contains uh, carbon. And from that, it tries to produce hydrogen and it produces CO2 and it may produce other byproducts as well. Um, but essentially what you can see here is that I've started off with a fuel. We haven't yet combusted it, hence the term pre-combustion. We've put it through a chemical separation process. So if, if it was, um, if it was a uh, coal, for example, um, you can actually uh, do what's known as coal gasification. Uh, will we'll allow you to create lots of hydrogen or it could be steam reforming. These are whole subjects on their own. And then once you've got that, uh, you've now got the opportunity here to take this hydrogen um, and we'd ideally purify that uh, well. And we can bust that with some air. So here's our combustor. Uh, what we get out of this ultimately is we're burning hydrogen in air. We get water, H2O. Um, and of course, uh, along with the ride, there's nitrogen. Um, these are actually one stream. Um, but the effect of that basically is that you've now got uh, gas. It doesn't contain any CO2 anymore because we were to remove the CO2 back here. Um, and we can then release this to the atmosphere without any concerns about greenhouse gases because we've already removed them. That's pre-combustion capture. Um, the third technology is something that maybe uh, not something that many people would think of up the front. Up front uh, is known as oxyfuels. So what does oxyfuels do? Well, oxyfuels is you go back to the start here and you say, well, we've got this fundamental problem that we've got a fuel and it's mixing with all of this nitrogen um, in the process of getting the oxygen that you need, and therefore we end up with a dilute CO2 stream. Well, some people have thought along the years, well, what if we just remove the nitrogen and we burn the fuel in purified oxygen? And that's essentially what they do. So what we end up with at the start is what's known as an air separation system. Um, and there's a lot of technologies that can do that. I won't get into those here. Um, but what they effectively do is they take in some air, which is um, predominantly oxygen and nitrogen, We take out our oxygen and our nitrogen as separate streams. So we've, we've separated the air into oxygen and nitrogen. And the nice thing about that is that we can then run our combustion process on purified oxygen. So here's our combustion plant and here's our fuel and note here that the nitrogen's been separated off. We actually take that usually and just, just uh, release it back, back to the air. So we throw that away. And now because we're burning our fuel in a purified oxygen, what we end up with is essentially a purified CO2 stream at the end. So that's good. That, that actually deals with your problem um, because what you've done now is you've achieved what we were trying to achieve over here, get purified CO2. And over here, get purified CO2. So it's another way of doing it. Um, it does have the downside that, as you can probably appreciate, if you burn fuels in purified oxygen, um, the flames get extremely hot because you've provided them with, with a rich abundance of oxygen. And so what you often find is that they actually will need to recirculate some of the CO2 back into uh, the combustion process um, just to essentially dilute this fuel oxygen mixture down and reduce its temperature because otherwise it could get so hot that it could actually melt the combustion system that you're trying to, to operate. You know, the, the metals themselves would start to, to melt. Um, and so we've got to control temperatures that way. Uh, so there you have it. There's, there's the three sort of predominant approaches to carbon capture. Post-combustion -combust capture, where we can bolt something onto the end of our traditional um, combustion process. 
and separate out CO2. Pre-combustion capture, where we actually treat our fuel to remove carbon from it uh, before we do any combustion. So effectively, we're changing everything to a hydrogen combustion plant. As you can appreciate, that's a wholesale change from down here and is not really suitable for retrofit. And finally, we have oxyfuels, which looks at the nitrogen side and removes the nitrogen from uh, the system before we do combustion.